Okay, so I'm pretty excited to talk about the game today. If you followed my channel at all, you know I love Western games. And, you know, Western history in general, but games in particular, which we don't get enough of. Games like Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood. Games like Gun, if you remember that one. Games like, of course, the now classic and irrefutably probably the best Western game ever made, Red Dead Redemption. But when you tell me you have a Western game that's a role-playing game, turn-based, I'm gonna take notice. And that's what the Experimental Gamer has with Boot Hill Bounties, a sequel to Boot Hill Heroes. And if you never heard of it, it's on Steam now, and this one's just about to drop. If you have any inkling of an RPG element fan in you and you love nostalgia, I'm telling you right now, saddle on up because this is one game you're gonna wanna jump into immediately. Now, Boo Hill Bounties does take place shortly after the end of the first game with the same core characters, but if you never played the game, don't worry. The game will do a really good job of catching you up on the background and history of these characters. And soon enough, they're gonna be going after the Saints gang once again because there's bad guys out in the old wild west and partner, you gotta take them down. This is where the game is really interesting. It just throws you in this Western world that feels classically ripped out of classic Western movies. Everything from the Tombstone, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's just a countless mirage of inspirations here, also taken from probably movies and other games and also real life history. It's fascinating. It's just interesting to see this game and all presented in retro graphics. Now, as you explore the different towns, areas, and places, you're going to be getting into turn-based combat. That's right, you heard me. Turn-based combat for a Western game. And it's done in a first-person style, similar to Earthbound. And if you didn't notice from the graphics I'm showing you, they also kind of have that Earthbound feel, and it's wonderful. You're going to be actually using this active time element system to go ahead and use and queue up different attacks for different enemies to do the most damage possible. Changing different hats so you can earn different moves and different skill sets. It's really a cool system. It's nothing extraordinarily different than the majority of role-playing turn-based games, but it gets the job well done. Well done indeed. And it's just fun. And what one thing that I really love about the graphics in this game and just the presentation is the various locations and enemies that you fight. I mean, there is never almost a dull moment in this game. And the scenarios that this game throws at you is just a constant wonder. From going into a hidden monastery, basically, of bad guys and hiding as monks, scouring the environment, or perhaps going to an area with an old circus. There is just a ton of variation here. My favorite has got to be where you go out into the desert and basically start hallucinating stuff. And I don't even want to spoil the rest of that because there are some really cool parts that had me, my mind was blown. Boom. You know what? Dang it. The experimental gamer, you blew my mind on that part. Uh, wow. That was just entertaining to say the least. The soundtrack here is absolutely wonderful too. It just has that classic Western vibe and I can just sit here and stare and listen to this background screen, intro screen for as long as possible. I just, it's music to my ears. Sadly, the characters do not have any voiceovers, but it's fine. There's a lot of dialogue here. It probably would have taken a long time and a lot more effort to get a ton of voice actors for this. And uh, at this caliber of game and how, how long it is, you're looking at like 20 to 30 hours depending. It's just like that would be a lot to do. It's just a lot. But yeah, you're going to be going through these different areas doing this turn-based combat. And honestly, like thinking on this game and playing it, my experience, it just gives me that feeling of finding that undiscovered retro RPG that was sitting on the back shelf that you're just sitting there. And one day you're maybe looking through your shelf and it's like maybe it was hidden in the wall. And it's just like the wall parts. And there it is. Boot Hill Bounties right there for you. And I just, I can't gloat enough about this game because it just hit me in all the right places. The feels, the western theme, which they absolutely nail out of the park. The variation from mines, like I said, mining areas to the, the, the circus to the hallucinogen. Hallu <laughs> hallucinating in the desert all of this stuff it's like there is just again there's like never a dull moment there are a few issues i do have with the game and unfortunately um you know some of them are minor some are a little bit more but for the first one would be the 
the crashes. I've had quite a few crashes, but what's really cool is uh, David has an email. So if it crashes, there's a there's a crash log, and actually everything I've dealt with so far, I've sent him that crash log, and he's he's come right back, and he's pretty much fixed it ASAP and put a new build out on Steam. So that's great to hear, man. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, it you know it's it's a little frustrating because I'm liking this game so much, but you're on top of it, and kudos to you for that. Another little things here and there that I notice when kind of traversing the environment, sometimes I'll get stuck. Uh, you can use horses to traverse and pull them out at any time, but you have to be sitting still when you hit the Y button to get on them. And sometimes because of the way they're bigger, you know, the character designs and stuff are bigger on horses, it's harder to go through smaller, narrower places without getting caught up on something. But it's, it's a minor nuisance. As far as just the gameplay itself, I think everything works perfectly. The fighting is fun. It's fast. You can slow it down. You can speed it up if you want. You can put it on easy, put it on hard. All just depends how you want to play the game. The, the mechanics in the game too, from farming and harvesting some things around the environment to cooking, to uh, get basically imbuing your weapons with different uh, abilities, depending on uh, what uh, abilities, or I should say what items that you use on it. It's just a really interesting thing. And then even the one character, Doc, he can actually heal you or learn ways to heal your characters when you go camping. And yeah, there's camping in this game. You can go to night and go to sleep, talk with your people. It's really cool. And then there's another thing I want to talk about here that just kind of gloat about. I'm going I'm going away from the negatives again, back to the positives. It, this game is kind of open-ended. And what I mean by that is the game starts and kind of has a prologue, and then you get to a point, and you can kind of go whichever way you want to to do the story. Everything's going to end up being the same in a way, but you can kind of have a choice of what you, you know, do you want to go after this bad guy or this bad guy or this bad guy or this bad guy? And each one takes you to a new and exciting, crazy, interesting place with new characters, new enemies to fight. The funniest thing is, too, is there's there's these side quests, right? And one of them I found out by, I was looking in one of the newspapers that come out, and it talked about a town being attacked by a vicious strain of rabies. So I went traversing into that town, and there's enemies, uh, animals that are rabies. They're just, they're foaming at the mouth, and that, I don't know, it just cracked me up. One of the other favorite parts of mine is where you get attacked by a giant moose, and his head literally, it's up close like giant moose, and he's literally, his head's like right in your way, so you can't see, like it's hard to see anything else other than this giant moose's head, and you're just hitting him, hitting him. Difficulty wise, it seems pretty on par. There was one boss I had a problem with, but other than that, things seem to go pretty smoothly. And again, there's a difficulty option for those having a hard time. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just reflecting on my entire experience on Boot Hill Bounties. It's just wonderful. It's like a game that is out of time, out of, you know, like if you said, hey, we're going to take an Earthbound game and we're going to give you a little bit of cool scenarios like our Chrono Trigger. We're just going to mix all that stuff together. Cool inventive things cool battle system, cool environment, cool unique things, funny dialogue. I don't know. I'm just taken aback by this game. And again, as, as far as my top 10 games of the year, Boot Hill Bounties snuck its way up to my number 10. It's just so damn good. I don't know how else to say it. It's other than the crashing. Like I said, the crashing kind of irritated me. But other than that, man, it's like, thank you for making this game. I had always thought I want a Western RPG, a tried and true Western RPG, and you've done it. You've absolutely done what I've always wanted to do, and I'm not a programmer, unfortunately, but you've created like something that I have always envisioned in my head, and maybe that's why I love it as much as I do, but it just hit me in all the feels, in all the right ways, and I can't stop playing this game. Like It's just so good. I hope it comes to consoles. I know that might not even be in the works right now, but I assure you, if it does, I will be buying a copy of this game on consoles as well, and if it ever gets a physical release, it is going on my shelf right next to all these bad boys right here. Like, it, I, I just, I'm not going to shut up now because I just can't say anymore. This game comes out on the 15th on Steam. It's relatively cheap. You really should check it out if you're into role-playing games. Super Nintendo style. It's just phenomenal to me. It's just so good. Uh, anyway, thanks guys for watching. If you like this, please give a subscribe. Please give uh, the Experimental Gamer support. Purchase the game. And this review was actually, a code was provided by them. So thank you for that. I can't gloat enough about this. I just, I just need to get away. So I just, there's nothing else I can say. I loved it. I loved this game. I love this game. And to me, this is one of the best Western games I've ever played as far as Western games in general. And it's one of my favorite probably RPGs now. So thank you, David. Thank you, Experimental Gamer. I can't, I can't, I'm just done. I just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna probably go play some more here. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.